welcome everyone for the weekly english discussion for one hour and i'm sorry that i have forgotten and therefore there was a time a kind of a time lapse but anyway we have almost one hour like so i would like to invite for the formal start of the discussion with the reading of this particular sutra Hey, my Sainasa. So, actually, we are discussing uh, Sangyutta Nikaya, Connected Discourses of the Buddha, and we have reached a sutta called Kutika Sutta. So, this is the uh, 19th sutta of the Sangyutta Nikaya, and I'll read the uh, Pali verse, and then the uh, other vendables will recite the English translation and the Sinhala translation, and then Bhante can give an explanation. So at one time uh, Buddha was dwelling at Savatthi Jethana Rame and at that time one deity approached the Buddha and he recites a verse like this Kachite kutika natthi kachi natthi kulavaka kachi santanaka natthi kachi muttosi bandhanati I'll repeat the verse Kachite kutika natthi kachi natthi kulavaka Kachi Santanaka Nathi, Kachi Muttosi Bandhanati. Then Buddha answers like this, Pagha Me Kutika Nathi, Pagha Nathi Kulavaka. Pagha Santanaka Nathi, Pagha Muttosmi Bandhanati. So I invite Venerable uh, Dhamma Lankara to recite the Sinhala translation and then Dhamma Osada to recite the English translation. Also right, so I mean, as a Kutika Sutra, Savath Nura, Devi, Kima, Mumba Vahan Seta, Kutiek Nad, Kima, Mumba Vahan Seta, Kadali Nad, Kima, Mumba Vahan Seta, Kula Prameni Hunad, Kima, Bandane, Midunahida, Bhagavatu, Ekat Nen Mata, Kutiek Nata, Ekat Nen Mata, Kadali Nata, Ekat Nen, Kula Prameni Hunata, Ekat Nen, Mama Bandane, Midunemi. Asai Swami Nase, the English translation by Bhikkhu Bodhi is titled A Little Hut. And the first verse is Don't you have a little hut? Don't you have a little nest? Don't you have any lines extended? Are you free from bondage? And the Buddha responds Surely I have no little hut. Surely I have no little nest. Surely, I have no lines extended. Surely, I'm free from bondage. And uh, I'll I'll continue. Shall I continue, Sami Nuhansa? Yes, you may give your opinion or your interpretation, please. So, actually, uh, I'll I like to mention like this here. So, sometimes, actually, now, here, uh, this deva, this deity is asking... Uh, whether you have a kuti or whether you have a nest. And Buddha says, I don't have a kuti and I don't have a nest. And I am basically freed. And uh, there is another, I remember there is another sutta where Buddha is uh, mentioned as a one who doesn't have any dwelling place. The Anokasari. So Buddha was called as Anokasari. And typically all others are Okasari. Particularly the other worldly beings are called Okasari. Okasari means that they are always associating a particular place, always associating a house, a place, every time attached to some something, some place. And this is my house, this is my place. So likewise, there is a kind of attachment. But Buddha is called Anokasari because there is no any such kind of a bondage, any kind of a such attachment. And there is a further uh, deeper meaning to that. So why why someone is called Okasari. So that is explained in the Halidhikani Sutta. It is mentioned that the typically the consciousness is associating one of the other aggregates. Either it associates the form, a, form aggregate, either it associates the feelings aggregate, either it associates the perceptions aggregate or either it associates the formations aggregate. The idea is whatever the consciousness aggregate associates, the it finds a dwelling place, the it find a kuti, the it finds a home, uh, so that it will lash there, so that it will dwell there, and attach to that, and hindered there. But when it does not associate any place, then it, we can say it is completely freed, completely released. Then it is called anokasari. 
न निमित्तानुसारी विज्ञान होती टिपिकली देर आर नो सच ड्वेलिंग प्लेस देन द विज्ञान द कॉन्शियसनेस इज कंप्लीटली फ्रीड सो द बुद्धस कॉन्शियसनेस दे आर फोर इज मेन्शन लाइक इट इज अ फ्री कॉन्शियस वी कैन से अ कंप्लीटली लिबरेटेड कॉन्शियसनेस देर इज नो एनी अटैचमेंट एनी ग्रास्पिंग any hindrance so it's a kind of a completely boundless no boundary type of a state and uh, so that is why typically it is called anokasari there is no dwelling place we can say in the from the mundane term that he has no attachment to any of the physical dwelling place but in a deeper sense we can say the consciousness is no more associating anything to grasp so it is unestablished and again it is completely freed so this is something swaminas i thought of adding here and swaminas can add something more please to the same line we can say animitta appanihita animitta means there is nothing to represent there is no manifestation no manifested signs appatitta means there is no place it is dwelling in the hindu tradition it says nirguna uh, no any attribution no any correct is such consciousness is worth calling consciousness that is the great thing the consciousness is always with an attachment always with a sign always with its uh, quality and always located we got address address nati wenna gahana hai kiyala kiyan address that is a place so when we are going to apply for a visa passport anywhere they are asking the address because they want to locate you why do you think it is for your well being this is how you have been attacked by the drones <laughs> everyone knows your location <laughs> now or the google information and the american way the jewish way they attack hisbullah leaders they attack uh, Osama, and they attack a lot of people. That is, we think we are well connected, but what happened is, so it just is taken. So the Buddha invented the term atamita. There are some goodies. There are some the 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 our nest, and there are some all the kind of things, but. i am not claiming i am disclaiming it i am not claiming so this is not civilization this is not the mass media so therefore artificial intelligence is was uh, inviting and progressing and diversifying with a location that location is very very important that's called pivotal point we call benchmark and we call the starting point and each and every object worldly objects always reaching that the pivotal point and reaching the target so much so you are a slave but in the eight fold path when you reach that that is dissolved your target is dissolved that means you are dissolved so that's the biggest disappointment on the earth so therefore each and every appointment each and every motivation Each and every creativity is the creation of suffering. So, therefore, you have to have to do is have less creative, uh, non-suffering, limited suffering in order to get rid of huge lot of suffering. That's called karma loka. You are getting rid of with the help of rupa loka. Rupa loka means ana pana, so left and the right and the rising and falling that kind of thing so it is difficult but it is not so difficult then you know the uh, the then you know the pivotal point you know your object of meditation you know your benchmark so much so you know you are completely away from moral uh, distractions immorality and you are utterly protected and you are have some only uh, obsessional defilement and you can define them this is what i have and then once that obsession also gone that particular object 
start to dissolve. That particular benchmark going to dissolve. Your mindfulness is going to dissolve. Your boundaries in the body are going to dissolve. Your time and space uh, dimensions getting mingled with each other. There are no. So it appears like disappointment, disagreeable. It appears like fault finding. So human mind is always, whenever there is irritation, always try to get rid of the irritation. That's the way you get diversified. Only you have to understand when you are nearing the truth, when you are nearing the object, your irritation is increasing, your disagreeability increasing. And still you have a perfection in your mind, the pedantic idea. And then you find fault with others. Instead, still, your being is the main fault, the main disagreeable thing, the main irritation. So be with it. That is we call austerity. We call uh, tapas. We call hermit. And then dwelling is called hermitage. So that hermitage is the word meaning of the sutta. Kutikara sutta. So therefore we have to have a kuti in order to get rid of the world. And then have kuti, get rid of the kuti, Considering each and every kuti is mine. So your bondage to the, your kuti, kuti is kuti. You have to take care about and housekeeping and everything. But not mind you. So the Buddha in the sutta, it says, your mother is the main binding, kuti. And your wife is the making the cradle, the, the cage. There's like a bird. And likewise, we are in utter mess. It's utterly disagreeable. Utterly irritation. We consider this as life. We can we consider just sansara. So we have a, a, a desire for sansara and fear of freedom. Fear of unknown. Because unknown is known as irritation. Unknown is known as disagreement. Unknown is says that uh, I am not perfect, that is why I, I am lost. So unknown is Buddha is recognized as Atamayata. So these things are never been taught, never been taken as a topic for day-to-day -day popular Dhamma talks. But we in Nisarnavane, our tradition are given enough nutrients for that. But still that is not enough. Still we have to Practice and see while you are practicing how the irritation happens, how the monotony happens, how the self uh, criticism happens, how the fault finding with others happens, how the disagreeability happens. I will prepare a meditation hall, no mosquitoes, no flies, no wind currents, air condition, soundproof, and everything. So likewise, we become pedantic. So basic thing is, you become unmindful. That is what people are wasting their time, meditating time, and freedom, thinking this is good for the mankind. No, it's utter waste. You are boosting your ego. Enough meditation halls are there in the world. Enough building places are there in the world. Forests are there. Go and practice. And while practicing, you will understand how to detach from the dwelling, how to detach from your point of focus, I mean, the object. And when you're dissolving, you feel so free. You feel so dislodged. You feel so uh, outcasted. Then mind becomes anjabhaja. It is called manjana. It is called start thinking and fearful and uncertain and vomitish and uh, irritation and allergic reactions. So this is full in meditation world. So therefore, asylum and the meditation hall is exactly the same. Meditation hall is called as asylum. So this is provoking. 
is provoking uncertainty. So therefore, those who do not know meditation, specifically Vipassana is for that, uh, they will be dis- disappointed. They will find fault with the teacher and the place and the meditation tactic. I mean, object of meditation. So always the question papers and the interview reports are for that. So that means they are really engaged, but outwardly looking. How to pacify, how to uh, uh, evade irritation, how to evade dissatisfaction or unagreeability, how to do perfection, how to evade uh, other faults. So these are these are not they're not uh, how do you call it? not relevant. But world pay says this is my civilization says that is you are very relevant. So therefore take care. But the main thing the wise people know whenever you turn your attention to them, you are simply not mind. You are simply not here and now. So therefore. If you are thinking about the creativity and modernity and uh, establishment and constitution and all the kind of things, first and foremost qualification is you must not be mindful. So this is where you can understand mindfulness is balanced with the wisdom and the compassion. The compassion side is giving little soft end to these kind of things. Wisdom side is very cut and dry. So therefore, people will not be happy. You are not a lovable person. You are not a agreeable person. But long last. You have a long life. But the thing is, very exhausting. Very costly. So we are in a very advanced situation in this situation. But if you go prepared, your catalytic energy will understand, I can do it. Don't complain. Don't demand something. Just continue. If it is so, you are the best yogi. So you are making use of opportunity maximum. And you can see very difficult to share with others. So they, they expect perfection before the Nibbana. That is what today meditation centers are. They are complaining for these little things. They are demanding so much of things. So therefore, the monastic and the monks, they are pathetically sick. Pathetically sick. And they expect their assistants to be perfect. They are expecting donors to be perfect. Expecting the kuti dwelling star to be perfect. And the silence must be perfect. But they are the now, what a nuisance. They are the people that are talking and talking, making noise, and daily making kuti. More you stay in the kuti, more you get bounded into the kuti. So, therefore, Nisarnwane, early principle says, don't leave Nisarnwane, unless otherwise you become enlightened. That is one of the five principles they had. So, when I go in there, people complain me. Nisarnwane is the Arahan factory. And other place close by is called Sohan factory. So if you are going, that means you are um, invariably claiming you try to be uh, enlightened, fully enlightened. When I go there, I heard some rumors and fabrications how that rumor spread. So I found that everywhere it is there. People bounded with that meditation center, bounded with the teacher, and bounded with the object of meditation. Then these three things the Buddha is, the Deva is asking, Buddha is attribution to them. And that is why we have to think about and halfway uh, quotations presented by Venerable Chandaratana. And when Jnananda is given so much of uh, more, how do you call, quotations from the suttas, that they are more appear to be Mahayana taste. So they have been highly quoted 
uh, Mahayana is a new sutra. And they have for they they find fault with the traditional development of the linear method, but linear method is highly appreciated in the Diti Suzuki's book Zen Mind, the Beginner's Mind. You must be a beginner. Don't try to think about this the up in the clouds. And therefore, balancing these two uh, come between the Maha Karuna Maha Panya or. compassion and the wisdom so the, in the end is wisdom yes but the compassion is the limbs in your walking you must understand how to use it but without damaging your head so we can continue with the discussion uh, i feel enough for the moment eh my swami nahansa so i am reading the uh, next verse and uh, then again as the reply this deity is telling like this ूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमीूमी
So against the grain, if you have to say goodbye to the mother and wife and the children, so that we have done. Therefore, we have done a great lot, a great lot. But we have a desire for the Rupa Loka, for our meditation object. We have a desire for Sati, mindfulness. We have a desire for our wisdom. We have a desire for our concentration. So then again you are trapped. In single discussion, we found how the Vepachitti the bondages are there. So therefore, you can't live without desire. Therefore, the Buddha says, lose the gross desire with the help of manageable, medium kind of desire. And medium kind of desire is naturally dissolving. Naturally in a flux. Naturally in a disarray. Naturally give it irritation. So therefore, once you reach the materiality or rupa loka, you have to be happy that you are away from the karma loka. But rupa loka is not a stable place. Don't get uh, irritated. Don't get disappointed. Don't expect a confirmed rupa loka per pedantic. Uh, don't find fault with others because my rupa jhana Rupa understanding is weak because the other people are not giving the support. They are not mendicants. mendicants. They are not ascetics. They have no. They are waiting for a dwelling. So therefore, that area is against the civilization, against the grain, and much much potential, high potential area. So you must have so much of uh, preparedness, merit must have so much of uh, prepared mind, mindset to that. But lucky thing is, good thing is, if that is accepted, mitigation progress is very, very fast. This boredom is very close by. It is around the, under your nose. But thing is, we are not ready. We are always uh, Expect that to be happen very slow. So therefore, meditation is slow. So therefore, meditation is happening in the S-shaped curve. At the beginning, very flat. And then only gaining the ground. And when it is reaching, it's again flat off. And don't exactly see reaching without y-axis development. So S-shaped curve is very famous in economic development. So that is happened. And again, the, another wave starts. And likewise, it is pushing forward without scale effect, without uh, economics of scale. It is how it happens, very difficult to imagine. Because you are losing all your dwellings, all your uh, beddings, all your progenies, and all your desire, and that's also kind of a desire. That's also kind of a desire. That is what we call the prepared mind. That is what we call the mindset. And it is not belongs to you. It is universal. It's called Dhammata. And yeah, Nyaya Dharma is the law of the nature. And we are think, we think that uh, going against the grain. But the sansara is something going against the grain. Nibbana is flawless, frictionless, comfort zone. It's so prominent, so uh, under your very nose, but our ignorance is not happy to take it so quickly, otherwise you will mentally break down. Or physically, you disqualify yourself. So therefore, have, having that uh, prepared mind, having that uh, mindset, is a highly discussed person in the education system. How to prepare that preparedness? How to prepare that mindset? This is difficult because highly educated people are idiots. They don't have this uh, this thing because if they are going to declare this uh, preparedness, the children are more qualified than the, uh, all the duns. So therefore, they are doing it very, very slowly. But lucky enough, we are in an era which accepted in education circles. So that is what 
we have to think about artificial intelligence and the mindfulness <coughs> how these things are connected with the directed in terms of moral shame and moral fear and there are subjects so they have one has to understand how we give values for this kind of a, a social uh, benchmarks pivotal points like mother wife and the children and if you are not fulfilling them you are not a civil civilian you are not a civilized person you are a you are a black sheep a dirt in your eye so therefore people will this how the this connect you and uh, uh, how do you call uh, chase away from the clan so therefore i i like the book uh, jonathan livingston seagal and whenever he is learning his family is uh, decasting outcasting him and he still cut through i say is a quite a classic in that sense so we have to learn it in a very very slow way because our mind do not like the truth okay hey my son us actually we just have another another single verse so as a acknowledgement this deity saying like this sahute kutika natti sahu natti kulavaka sahu santanaka natti sahu muttosi bandhanati avasara is amin nasa devi manavi mumba vahanseta kuti ek nata manavi kadali nata manavi kula praveni hu nata manavi bandhanen midunehi Asarai Swami Nanse, the last English verse says, It's good that you have no little hut, good that you have no little nest, good that you have no lines extended, good that you are free from bondage. So that is how, when the proper interpretation is given, even the God can understand. That's because of intermediate few verses from the absolute truth to the common sense. So one day in the discussion, Jesus Christ was in the center, a house so full, full uh, house full. And one messenger comes and says, um, uh, Virgin Mary came and your mother came, wanted to meet. Then the, Jesus Christ said, I don't have a mother. I am a son of God. Ask them to go away. So people, the, for the compassionate kind of people, I mean, Mother Teresa, Mother Virgin Mary churches will not be happy, but it is in the Bible. So likewise, uh, Pandita Sayadu says, when you become a great pastor, they should not have a retinue of children, the yogi is following you, if it is so something wrong. And uh, Krishnamurti, whenever he is traveling as a, the Eastern of the star organization, that uh, that plane is always started, starter plane, full of cooks and the tailors and everything. Then he says, that is not the way. You must be independent. And he give a example. You don't try to be a follower. Try to be the master. I mean, don't inferior. So one day. in the top of the mountain cool place a monk, monk was making a buddha statue with a log of um, sandana wood i can do more than sandal sandal wood. wood and he was chipping off and then the kapakaru is about to leave he come and says bande not in a five wood and night is going to be very very cool but the monk is so engaged carving everything and the last drop finished then the kapakaru is so the assistant is coming and telling all the five would finish he asked them to all the chips sandal wood to burn so he wanted to continue and now he is become chilled and he is about to die and kapakaru go So what to do? He split the Buddha statue, put it into the fire. Otherwise, he has died. So that is how you have to burn your best uh, creation. 
to mother, wife, children, and everything. Otherwise, you know liberation. You have to die. So he gives that example because that followers ultimately the day he becomes the competent authority, he dissolves the star organization, and still people remember him. And all the masters suffer this question. Who Pandit said one day mentioned. to vivekananda 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 when you become popular be careful about your relatives don't go close so they 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 never think about this absolute truth they want to take you down in order to get the the materialistic support and you also feel like supporting them ultimately what happens is it's a wrong example wrong role model best thing is to do away with it So therefore, kau dah ni meyayo, na dayo ayo na. So always they say na ba. That is what you call relative. Relative. Therefore, once you become ordained, run away to the place. No one can listen. Your relatives, no one can see you, and that is the kind of a heaven. So it appears like appears like negative. Appears like an unsocial. That's why in the Nishan Vane in the big wall, at the wall picture, after climbing the mountain, throw away the ladder. Otherwise, you feel like getting down. You have to have some kind of a connection. But in the in the Buddha Kasapa last sasana, that is how they started. So they have to appear like suicide. Appear like suiciders, so therefore those who are thinking in this very life, liberation in this very life, that they, they are behave is completely different. Others are very conservative, others are very grammatic, others are very systematic, and they are doing. I mean, they are they will get enough appreciation from the society, but internal that you are confirming your mother, confirming your wife, confirming your progeny. That means the kuti, beddings and the nest, nesting, and then the progeny. So that that bondage, present day, these monks and the how to call abbot are totally in suffering. So they are ordaining so much of monks and so much disobey, and it's like a divorce, very difficult, but. If we not divorce, they are not disown. Disown the ordain. The they can't bail. Ultimately, they will commit suicide. So therefore, we are <coughs> understand how agony. What an agony to be a leader. It's a, it's a cost. People think leaders are much better than the followers, and the, it's a duty to. Have the children, the relationship between the chieftain and the this thing. But the Buddha at the last this bit, he asked, "Do you have any expectation about me? I don't have any expect. No one talk, uh, speak. No one talk, because everyone at least saw the one. No such a relationship. So today, Buddha Sahasan Amatyan, they always try to give a relation, giving a kuti and giving a bank account and. All kind of thing. That is because they don't. They are lack of understanding to the Dhamma, but they are understand the religion. Ism. Ism means these three: the kuti, and the nesting, and the progeny. That is called pavatta. Nibbana is called apavatta. End. So therefore, each and every misstep in your life is a sign for uh, these three. You can understand how much you are suffering. That means you have so much of the last attribution is tanha. That is what gets hurt. So therefore, let that happen before your death. Otherwise, your deathbed will be an agony. So before the death, if you have all the mishaps, you have a mindset. You have the preparedness. So that is what I thought of sharing in this moment. We have a uh, comment, uh, Swami Nanda, from our side. Oh, sorry, Bhante. This is the Moshida. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for that uh, inspiring comment. 
it really spoke to me when you talked about throwing away the ladder like in the case of those five ascetics uh, and it remind it reminds me of a story that i once read about spanish explorers they were called conquistadors uh these were spanish explorers of recent centuries what they would do is they would travel by ship to an unknown land or unknown island and they would burn they would literally set the ship on fire once they got onto the shores to make sure that they accomplish what they had come to do so that kind of determination it's uh, really inspiring and sometimes uh i th- i think to myself uh our parents our spouses our children like the buddha says they cannot save us they cannot save us from suffering so i suppose we should throw away our parents <laughs> and our spouses and our children but of course this comes with a level of maturity after you see that uh you know existence is suffering and the only way out is to be free from everything and from everyone so that that um that uh idea of throwing away the ladder like in the case of those ascetics I I I just find it uh, inspiring. It's personally inspiring to me. That's just what I wanted to share. Thank you. That is why I came to Anuradhapur leaving you all there mercilessly. I don't feel regret. And I am after the western season I have to fly away. Yeah, I don't um, early I had some sense of responsibility and this of uh, kind of a disappointment and kind of thing but slowly slowly it is happening because of this discussion and you bloody fellows are coming from african countries and living with us very happily why not kalu amdo so therefore we must we must live an exemplified life if it is not so you are cheating yourself your vipassana is not good but it is don't expect it is in the very fast way it's happening painfully slow but i am telling we are at really really advanced we are really really setting an example because our age is something whole world is burning whole world is nuclear war now fighting each other like animals worse than animals but we are spreading mindfulness we are living in mindful family and we are learning from the mindful campus no friction no one can understand how the governments are changing the ministers are changing people are changing but the mindfulness is steady because we have no expectation if it is happening good if it is not happening still good so mahadev said he used to say when someone is coming and asking respectfully bande please advise me he is ready he is having some group meditation and group walking system and all the kind of things. but there are sometimes no one no followers you are living alone then he says if there is no one i advise myself this is the best time you to understand when someone close to something close to that when jnananda also mentioned if there is no one it's the best advice for me so there is not a loss it's not a deep corner it's not the deep casting you are training yourself to be deep cast outcast and uh, cornered a loneliness become aloneness so that change is here uh, is uh, what uh, i call the evolution of the mind that stopped 20 billions ago for the human or millions ago people are not improving they do not know how to do away with the self they are always always promoting self by external development but internalization 
the Buddha explained seven, within seven years, you can evolve. But people never, they, people follow Charles Dahl with evolution and adaptation and the survival of the weakest. So this one, the Buddha explained, and after doing it, not like uh, Charles Darwin going to the Galapagos Island and finding the big tot uh, the tur tur turtles. So therefore, this is very, very uh, challenging, very, very um, non-traditional and revolutionary. That evolution is, people have forgotten and they are thinking something else in the worldly evolution. Radical ideas about the external world. That is so even animals are doing. So therefore you have to be a best animal, no harm. But think about this, that it is suicidal. It is something like uh, self-destructive. So therefore very difficult to go out to live in that sphere. You have to establish yourself for the God to uh, establish. Or a synagogue or a church. But if there is, you are not there, but the hell, they are the God to live. So therefore, you are the creator of God, not the God created you. So this idea is bringing you at home, back home. You can live without mother, live without wife, <coughs> live without the progeny. You can live without the house, without any cuddling with the cages, and without... Uh, the parathma, continuity. No, it is, continuity is the nature. You try to understand it, so therefore this is a kind of a revolution divine, good sutta. Swamina Savasarai, so we are reaching the uh, closer I, to the Pindapatha, so I suggest to wind up the session then? Yes, please. Hey, Swamina, so I invite uh, Venerable Dhammo Sattu to uh, share the merits. Good. May our relatives and all beings share in the merits produced by today's teaching. May all celestial beings share in the merit produced by today's teaching, and may they protect the Dhamma exposition and dispensation of the Buddha for a long time. May the seeds of the Buddha's teaching that have been planted in our hearts grow, producing path, fruition, and Nibbana. I invite you to join in the recitation of the traditional Pali verses for sharing merits. <laughs> 